Hello everybody, and thank you for watching this recording. In this recording, we're going to be going over Chapter 11, um, also known as Menu Engineering. In terms of our learning objectives for this particular content, uh, we're going to be able to complete a Menu Engineering worksheet and analyze the information that we get from it. We're going to be able to define the terms star, dogs, plow horses, and puzzles, and um, explain why they relate to menu uh, uh, menu engineering and analysis and how we can um, and how we can use that information. We're going to be able to prepare a chart showing our dogs horse, uh, horses, our dogs, plow horses, stars and puzzles. And probably the most important part of this uh, talk is we're going to be able to describe appropriate actions to take in order to change a menu items classification if necessary. So what is menu engineering? Menu engineering is a technique used to analyze each menu item sales and really look at the, the sales mix percentages as well as the contributions for each item. Um, we do this primarily to understand which items on our menus are uh, either more popular than others or are contributing more money to the bottom line than others. This whole um, uh, concept is really just best explained by actually doing a menu engineering um, analysis and then afterwards uh, you know using the information to better our menus. So this is what a menu engineering worksheet looks like. Uh, you'll have each oops little pen here. There we go. Uh, we have each menu item in our restaurant. Um, we have the number that we sold for a total amount of menu items sold. We can then calculate the menu mix percentage, which is calculated by taking the number sold and then dividing it by the total sold, but we'll get into this, so don't, too worry, don't worry too much about the calculations right now. Um, we identify that item's food cost and its sales price. These things will already be established for you. And then you can calculate that item's contribution margin by taking the sales price minusing the food cost. You can also assign um, a total menu cost. So basically, from selling 252 tri-tip steak steaks, how much cost did we incur from that? Well, what we do in this case is we take the number sold, 252, we multiply it by the food cost for that item, and we'll get the menu cost. And then we have to identify the total amount of sales that each uh, menu item generated. We do that by taking the sales price and multiplying it by the number sold and that will give us the amount of sales that every item produced. We can then um, add up um, the total sales and the, the, uh, the total menu cost. We can also identify the total contribution that each item made. We do that by taking the total sales and subtracting the total cost and that gives us each items menu contribution okay um, and once we've gotten to that point we have to identify um, how popular each item was and what we do there is we take the the amount of items on the menu or sorry one divided by the number of menu uh, menu items we have multiplied by 0 0.7 just to uh, kind of smooth out the data and that is our average popularity number. In this case, it's, uh, I think it's 4% right here, 4.66%. So that would be our average popularity from which we compare each menu, uh, menu item's menu mix percentage to determine whether that um, item has a high or low um, popularity. And then next, we would calculate our average contribution. So we take the, the total menu contribution and then divide it by um, the number of covers sold. And that will give us our, our average contribution and then we can allocate or understand whether each item is either high or low in comparison to the average contribution. We use that by um, comparing the contribution margin. Okay, So in this case the average contribution margin was uh, $17.85. We look at each item's contribution margin and if it is higher than the average, then we rank it as high. And if it is lower, then we rank it lower. Okay. 
And then we get into menu items, uh, or sorry, classifying the menu item as either a dog, star, plow horse, or um, a puzzle. And we'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so here are the four menu item classifications with respect to menu, uh, menu engineering. First, we have, uh, starting on the top right-hand side here, we have our stars. And those are items that have a high popularity and a high contribution margin in comparison to the average. These are usually our star dishes. We sell a lot of them, and we make a lot of money off them. So these are great things to have. We also have plow horses, which are items that have a high popularity, so we sell a ton of them, but a low contribution margin. So we sell a lot of them, but we could make a little bit more money off them. Okay. We also have uh, puzzles, which have high contribution margins, but low popularity. So we make a lot of money uh, off these items when we sell them, but we don't sell them a whole lot, so they could be better. Finally, we have dogs. And dogs are items that have a low contribution margin and a low popularity. So these items are not doing anything for us on our menu. Now, what do we do with this kind of information after we've been able to um, classify each menu item? Well, secretly, every item is trying to become a star. Well, think about it that way, right? So, for instance, a plow horse has a low contribution margin, and if we, if we could increase that to above the average, it would have a high contribution margin and would then become a star. On the other hand, if we have a puzzle and we wanted, to be, uh, we wanted it to become a star, we would have to increase the popularity because it, because it has low popularity. Uh, when compared to the average. So if we could fix that, we could turn that into a star as well. Um, as for dogs, um, unless you could drastically in, uh, increase the contribution or the popularity to turn this either into a plow horse or a puzzle, uh, it's okay to get rid of these items off your menu. So you could actually take it off. But there are a few scenarios where you probably shouldn't. For instance, say if it was the only vegetarian item on your menu then you wouldn't want to get rid of that dog. Okay, so again, what we do with the results, um, our stars are popular and profitable, so we want to keep those on the menu without affecting sales volumes. Uh, say we were to increase the price, I mean. Um, you want to look at, I mean, we don't get into it too much, but you could look at each menu item's uh, price elasticity, and if it was right, you would be able to increase the price of the your star without affecting the menu volume or sorry the uh, sales volume and actually I think I'll bring that up in class because I think it's useful to know um, plow horses are unprofitable but they're popular so you want to keep those on your menu um, but try increase the contribution margin without decreasing the sales volume so uh, if we think about our contribution margin we calculate that by our sales minus our, our food cost or variable costs we would to increase our contribution margin we'd have to either increase our price or decrease the cost both would yield an increase in contribution now the problem is if we increase our price too much the sales volume might go down making it unpopular which turning this into a dog um, the best way to turn a plow horse into a, st a star for the most part is really take a look at your your food cost and see if you can cut it down a little bit okay Next, we have some puzzles. Again, profitable, unpopular. You want to keep these on your menu. However, you want to try and increase their popularity. You can do these. Uh, you can do this through uh, different sales tactics. So you could feature it for a day. You could bundle it with a, you know, a popular beverage, or you could uh, put it on um, a different place in your menu um, to make it more popular. Like for instance. Uh, if you wanted to turn a puzzle into a plow, uh, sorry, a star, and your puzzle is at the bottom of your menu, well, you could put it at the top of your menu, and it could theoretically increase uh, sales of that item, making it more popular. Lastly, what to do with our dogs? We these are unprofitable and unpopular. We can take these off the menu, but there's a couple reasons why we wouldn't. Um, just we wouldn't if we could, for sure, uh, like with a reasonable amount of. Um, certainty increase the profitability somehow so again either increase the price uh, and given that this is a dog it's unpopular probably won't help you out too much 
but if you could decrease the cost keeping the price the same this would turn this into a puzzle because it would make it more profitable um, again I think I've already mentioned that if this was a, ve a vegan or vegetarian item on your menu and it was the only one you would want to continue to sell this okay so um, again I, I had said that this topic is best explained by an example and uh, that's what we're gonna do or the example that I'm gonna put up um, is gonna be the menu engineering worksheet okay thanks for watching this video